I've been running Proxmox on an old Intel NUC for quite some time. This Intel NUC was purchased all the way back in 2014, and it's lived a happy little computer life. This little NUC has seen it all from Windows to Linux to even Proxmox. And to top it off, it was one of the first tech videos I ever made on my personal channel. Still waiting for that channel to blow up. I've always wanted to run a small and low energy and efficient Proxmox server in my environment. Something that I can fall back to if my other servers go down or I just need to shut them down for maintenance. And that's how this older Intel NUC made into my environment. I considered upgrading it, but the M SATA drives that this uses are super expensive. And at most, it can only use 16 gigs of RAM. So I decided to upgrade from a fourth gen Intel NUC to an 11th gen. And don't worry, it'll still live a good little computer life because I've decided to give it to my mom. Uh, mom, if you're watching, you're getting Linux. But more about that later. But first, a huge thanks to our sponsor, Micro Center. If you're a huge nerd like me, one of the best places to shop for all your technology needs is Micro Center. Nothing beats walking into a store and feeling right at home and that's how I feel the minute I walk into a Micro Center store, each and every time. They have the best deals on gear for gamers, streamers, custom build PCs with performance and budget options, keyboard and accessories, desktops and laptops, and much, much more. Whether you're looking to build your own dream system, networking and storage, pre-built desktops or laptops, home security and home automation, DIY and tech hobbies, even printers and television, or just some help from any of their experts, they really do know what they're talking about, Micro Center should be your destination. Also, Micro Center has been generous enough to give a free SSD to all new customers and is available in store only. So see the link in the description. So be sure to visit your local Micro Center store today. And if you can't make it in, be sure to check them out on the web. Oh, and tell them Techno Tim sent you. They'll have no idea who you're talking about. So this 11th gen is gonna be replacing my 4th gen NUC. And this 11th gen packs a lot of punch. This is the 11th gen Intel NUC with a Core i7 that has 12 megs of cache. It has four cores and eight threads and turbos up to 4.7 gigahertz with a TDP of only 40 watts. That's right, 40 watts, pretty efficient. It supports up to 64 gigs of DDR4 dual channel RAM. And some of the more advanced capabilities that I'm interested in for hypervisor is that it supports both VTX for virtualization and VDD, which allows direct access to hardware from the host to the guest machine. Now you can see why I chose this for a virtual server. It has PCI Express 4th gen and supports M.2 slots with PCIe X4 lanes. It also has a removable memory card slot built in. And if you want to live on the edge, you could run your OS there, but we're not going to. As far as the IO goes, it has seven USB ports, two in the front, which are type A and type C, and three in the rear, which are USB 3.2 gen two. And then it also has two that are available inside on a header. It also comes with 7.1 digital audio, but I don't think you'll be listening to anything on your server. And it also comes with Bluetooth and infrared. As far as networking goes, this has Wi-Fi 6, which is the next generation of Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi 6 has a theoretical speed of up to 9.6 gigabits per second, but you won't be seeing that anytime soon. But still, we're future-proofing a little bit by getting a device with Wi-Fi 6. And speaking of future-proof, this also has a 2.5 gigabit NIC on it, which is actually really nice for a virtualization server. Worth mentioning too that it has two Thunderbolt 3 ports, and it can drive up to four monitors at the same time. Now, I know a lot of those features are primarily for a workstation or a desktop, but some of them will definitely come handy as a virtualization server. So all of this inside this tiny little package is great. But what makes it even better is pairing it with lots of RAM and some high speed drives. This Intel NUC is getting a one terabyte Samsung 980 Pro PCIe 4.0 NVMe M.2 SSD delivering read speeds of up to 7,000 sequential read. But where this really shines is on random IOPS, which is exactly why I'll be running my virtual machines on this drive. In contrast, the OS disk that will only be running Proxmox is going to run on a standard SSD. Now this SSD is still fast, but it's more in the budget category because it's only running the operating system. And for the OS disk, I chose a Samsung Evo 860 500 gigabytes. Now this is plenty fast and plenty storage to run Proxmox VE. Then I'm pairing that fast storage with some fast RAM. For RAM, I decided to max it out to 64 gigs. I'm using G-Skill RipJaws DDR4 clocked at 3200 megahertz. This is a two by 32 gigabyte dual channel kit that provides speed, performance, and high energy efficiency. And believe it or not, that's all we need to run a low power, high performance virtualization server running Proxmox. So 
Let's open all this up and put it together. Okay, excuse the mess for a little bit. This is my workbench for now. But let's put the Intel NUC together. So this is the Intel NUC. As you can see, it's pretty compact and it's pretty tiny. So here's an SSD for scale. It's actually the SSD we'll be putting in in a little bit. So let's turn this over and let's open it up. Got the bottom off. And if you look inside of here, it's really compact. This should be a pretty easy install. So let's open up our RAM kit. So let's get our sticks of RAM installed here. There's one. There's the other one. Now here's our NVMe SSD. Again, this is going to store all of the virtual machine hard drives. So they'll all be running on this. Super fast storage with super fast IOPS. Tighten that down there. There we go, RAM, hard drive. Now one more hard drive. So the other SSD actually fits right up here. So it has a cage here and it should just pop right in. So I think I can just slide this right up here. If I line this up properly, there we go. Nice, it's actually super nice. And it looks like there's some additional screws to secure this drive if we want. Word of caution, if you're gonna do that, pop these little rubber screws out first. Okay, so let's now get this back together. Star pattern, always remember, star pattern. Okay, here it is, it's assembled. Now it's all hooked up, so let's see how this thing runs. But before we do, I actually hooked it up to this smart switch right here so we could see how much power it draws. So we should be able to turn this on now. So it's turning on and we have a splash screen, so that's good. Let's check how much power this draws just at idle. So right now, as you can see, it's only drawing 24 watts of power. Now I know it's not doing much, but 24 watts of power for just being on is, is really good. I can only imagine how much my server or my PC draws just by turning it on. I'm gonna leave this running so we can check it out later, but let's actually get an operating system installed on this. So let's get Proxmox installed on here. So I have this USB drive that I'm using. This USB drive has Ventoy installed, and Ventoy is an easy way to create a bootable USB drive with multiple operating systems on it. So I added Proxmox VE on here. So let's get this in here, and let's turn it on. And here's Ventoy. I can select different operating systems to boot from. I'm looking for Proxmox right here. We're gonna install, I agree. And here we're actually gonna choose not the one terabyte SSD, so the super fast one, but the other one, the 860. And checking the usage now, it's only using 14 watts, which is pretty incredible. But let's get this set up and migrate some virtual machines to it and check it out from there. Okay, so I just set up that new Proxmox server and got it up and running. I then joined it to my existing Proxmox cluster added storage, backed up all of my old virtual machines on the node that I was gonna decommission, and then restored them on this machine, my new Proxmox node. And this is actually pretty incredible. And if you wanna see all of that and more, I've got a guide on Proxmox that shows you how to do all of those steps and some more. <laughs> but it walks you through all the things I typically do when I set up a new Proxmox server as I just did. And so this is my new Proxmox server right here, Helios. I named it the same thing. And then I migrated four virtual machines here. And you can see I powered it on, powered it off, and it's using up some resources here. You can see the server load went way up when I was migrating machines and now it's back down. And you can see the memory usage start to go up here. And you could also see the CPU usage. So the reason why the CPU usage is kind of all over the place is because I was restoring compressed images 
while virtual machines were running. So it took a little bit of time. And you can see here, the traffic here matches just that. So what's really incredible about this is that the IO delay is super low. On my old node, I had only two machines running and the IO delay would hover around two to four, 5%. And you can see I'm running four virtual machines, which actually have more resources, and I have a super low IO delay, and that's thanks to that NVMe drive. And so another cool thing is actually the power consumption. So the power consumption right now for running four virtual machines all at a time is only 25 watts. That's incredibly low for a server or a PC or any device really, especially one that's running four virtual machines. And I plan to move a few more over here, but 25 to 26 watts is incredible for what it's doing. And that's because of all of that efficient hardware that's inside of that Intel NUC. So I'll be running the server through its paces over the next couple of weeks. So be sure you're subscribed to see how this turns out. And so what are your thoughts on running a server on an Intel NUC or running a small form factor efficient device as a server? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And remember, if you found anything in this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. What are you doing, puppy? You want something to say uh, something? <laughs> you got something to say? No. He's uh yeah, so this is Nano. He's uh he's he's a good boy. He's a good boy. He's just like a big I don't know. I call him Betsy sometimes because he, he has cow spots on him and he does his <laughs> it doesn't move, but he does a lot of groaning and making noises like he just was, so it's it's pretty funny.